Hello, and have we got some news for you on Friday night. Yes, Chainlink has dropped its 2024 plans. And yes, they inv involve RWA. So it's going to tokenize real world assets next year. Not bad for Chainlink, and it uh, includes expanding the cross-chain interoperability protocol, or CCIP. We all knew they were going to do this. Um, they, lit, they announced a series of strategic initiatives to bridge the gap between traditional finance and blockchain technology. So they want tra uh, TradFi to be on blockchain. And of course, it's going to support virtual tokenization of RWAs. Of course, it's all going to be on the CCIP. That's been making waves. That's what made Chainlink pump in the middle of the year. They said, we will heavily prioritize CCIP to meet the demand fueled by capital markets moving on chain. The expansion of CCIP will include more chains and assets, scaling its adoption in capital markets and RWAs. Chainlink has also introduced Chainlink data streams and Chainlink functions. So basically, like they want to enhance transparency and focus on developer expansion as well. And uh, they have um, prioritized the development of proof of reserve products. And they're going to have these in collaboration with asset issuers. So they want more clients on the blockchain. They want to tokenize a lot of assets. So it won't just be for pinging DeFi prices anymore. They want to tokenize like real world assets on the Chainlink blockchain, thereby expanding its use case and probably enhancing its value. Um, this will ultimately play a crucial role in establishing trust among institutional participants and investors, and they want to expand its global developer base. And they're going to try to focus on Web2 developers as well, because there's a whole lot of them. Um, they're going to place a strong emphasis on the Asian Pacific and Latin American regions, emerging markets, a lot of opportunity there, not as much like built in money there, but still a lot of opportunity there uh, for growth. Of course, uh, Chainlink, hopefully the token with these things, hopefully it'll actually go up next year. But that's kind of like its focus expansion globally with CCIP, especially in Latin America and Asia um, and RWA stuff and also focusing on develop uh, on expanding its developer base. These are really good goals for 2024. And if they can achieve all of them, they can definitely build a lot more value into the Chainlink blockchain. Ripple is ex uh, exploring AI integration. And I don't know, I mean, Ripple's token has not really done anything for a couple of years now, but uh, maybe this move will actually have something new. I still think Ripple needs smart contracts, needs AMM pools, which is for some reason their community is voting down in, in DeFi and all that stuff. But they, uh, David Schwartz wants to incorporate AI into Ripple's framework and want to herald the new era of possibilities. Um, he anticipates a significant shift in cybersecurity and financial services domains, enhanced, uh, driven by the security of ledger systems. And of course, and I'm not really sure what he's going to use AI chatbots for, for XRP Ledger. Um, I guess they hold the promise of streamlined development processes, yet despite the CTO's optimism, of course, they, Ripple has not made an official announcement. So this is really like David Schwartz hoping for things to actually happen. But... They do, but he doesn't. He does want to like integrate AI for uh, for Ripple. And the thing is, um, you know, he's a CTO. He has a lot of influence in the company. So if he really wants something to happen, it might just happen. Of course, they're still working on regulatory compliance. Obviously, they're still like in a battle with the SEC, which I think they're they've pretty much won. But the SEC is dragging it out as much as possible. So. Look for some AI developments in Ripple. Um, they haven't really discussed which ones. They're looking at like more AI uh, chatbots for like financial industry. Maybe that'll get more adoption from banks and financial firms. And if that happens, then obviously XRP token might actually go up just because of hype. Or maybe like the on-chain use will actually lead to something. I don't really think so. I don't really believe like the industrial utility will actually kick in for years and years. But maybe the hype with uh, Ripple AI chatbots and stuff like that will work for them just like it's worked for other chains and it might actually make the coin go up. X payments on Twitter will be here by 2024. Elon's made that announcement, but we don't really know if that's going to involve cryptocurrencies or not. In fact, most likely it will not because Elon has been kind of hinting that he wants to do like traditional finance first, integrating like 
credit cards and PayPal and stuff like that, especially PayPal. Maybe he actually wants to use stable coins. We know that PayPal does actually support a couple of crypto tokens in there, but stable coins would probably be my guess if he actually does go the crypto route, which would honestly make sense. He doesn't want to like screw with compliance too much. Yes, Elon does like antagonizing the SEC, but he probably doesn't want to risk too much either. He still needs to make uh, Twitter profitable. And obviously this is one step into actually making something like that happen. Right now, Twitter is probably losing more money uh, now than when Elon actually took a uh, hold because they lost about half of their advertising revenue throughout the year. Obviously, like the various like smaller companies that have pledged to advertise on Twitter have not offset the big budget advertising dollars from like Apple and other uh, places that have actually backed off on their advertising or just pulled out on their advertising altogether. So essentially, Elon Musk, um, he wants to make it an everything app and payments are going to be a big part of the everything app. The other stuff for Twitter is like he is really testing about like, you know, $1 per year for everyone. I don't know how much that would actually cut down in the population of Twitter, but a lot of the kids probably won't pay that $1 a year because they might not actually have the ability to pay a buck per year for Twitter. So, so the thing is like, yeah, there'll be a lot of inter interesting, uh, interesting things for Twitter. A lot of people are guessing at like, you know, my coins integration into Twitter or your coins integration into Twitter. Most likely if they do use a coin, I do think it's going to be Dogecoin, but I don't think the X payments thing has anything to do with cryptocurrencies. But if he does integrate Dogecoin, that would be great for Doge. Craig Wright, the fake Satoshi Nakamoto, has been ordered to pay $1 million, but his evidence has been accepted. That doesn't mean the evidence is true. It means the judge has allowed him to submit extra evidence, but he had to pay a million dollars just in case he lost the lawsuit. I think like both the judge and most of the jury doesn't actually believe Craig Wright at this point, but he is his ego is too big for him to actually let it go. And he has to prove that he is actually Satoshi Nakamoto. He's wasted a lot of the Bitcoin Core's developers' time and resources, and that's probably why the judge has imposed this on him. But he's still out there to prove that he's Satoshi Nakamoto. The only real way that he can convince the general public that he's actually Satoshi Nakamoto is if he actually moves funds, funds from this actual Satoshi wallet. But he's not going to be able to do that, so I don't think the rest of us will actually believe that he's Satoshi Nakamoto. And of course, like he's bringing in new evidence because obviously his old evidence isn't really any good. So, you know, he's been accused of fabricating evidence, forging and manipulating metadata, which he has, and purposely prolonging proceedings. Of course, he purposely prolonged proceedings um, mainly because like he wants to wear the other side out and make them run out of legal fees. And of course, uh, the judge obviously does not like this tactic all that much. And since Calvin Iyer is no longer backing him, he may not be able to do that anymore. Uh, he granted the developers a secondary security application, ordering Wright to pay by January 5th an additional 800,000 pounds or about a million dollars to cover the developer legal costs in the event he loses the trial. Uh, he's already deposited about 100,000 pounds, so the fees are actually piling up. And he also ordered Wright to pay 65,000 pounds to cover COPA's costs for expert evidence related to his autism spectrum disorder. So realistically like he's having to pay out the ass even before he really fights the lawsuit because he's dragged this lawsuit on long enough without providing any crucial evidence that he's actually satoshi nakamoto i.e moving coins from the original wallet but he continues to claim that he is indeed satoshi nakamoto but i don't think anyone really believes him besides that rabid bsv crowd and last of all curve is paying hack victims back in july 49 million dollars i think it's actually um been approved. It was approved on December 21st. There was a $61 million hack in July and you know people want their money back and they've approved this payback method. Just wanted to emphasize the scale of this. Victims made whole with his vote with 7.2 million worth of Ethereum covered by White Hats to the Dow being distributed, 42 million worth of CRV compensating unrecovered parts, other White Hat recovered funds distributed before vote. So basically this calculation of losses includes the amount of Ether and CRV tokens in the pools before the hack along with missed CRV admissions that would have been distributed to LPs over the past three months. So not only the original tokens, but the rewards that would have actually come with the original tokens if they had been actually like staked or kept. So this is a very, very good payment for the Curve uh, hack. And we heard about this hack in July. It was one of many throughout the year. And of course, the overall Ethereum to recover was calculated at 5919, and the CRV 
CRV to recover was calculated as 34,733. And the total to distribute was calculated to be um, 55544782.73 curve. So the proposal did actually get accepted. People will be getting reimbursements and will be getting their money back. And that's always a good news for crypto. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.